Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fishing Rod. Um, it is really, really, really cold. Um, seems like I've been saying that in every episode this year, but it really is. Um, it's early May, and um, we're staying at Tungkwa Lake Resort today. Um, last night when we arrived, um, it got down to about minus two degrees, and it snowed a little bit overnight. Um, but we're staying in one of these rusty cabins you can see in the background um, with the fireplace going it was actually pretty warm throughout the whole night so it wasn't too bad um, you can see the wind is blowing a little bit I'm standing on the floating dock um, we're gonna be going on the boat today crazy enough um, and hopefully we'll be getting some fish so like I said we're at Tonkwa Lake um, which is roughly around two and a half hour drive from Vancouver if you are just getting to interior lake fishing in British Columbia, this is probably the first lake you'll hear about because it's a highly productive lake. Um, every year the Freshwater Fisher Society BC puts in around 30,000 fish um, and they, these are Panas rainbow trout. They go into the lake as earlings, so roughly around 50 grams to 100 grams. But, and after spending a couple years in the lake, feeding the lake, um, they'll get up to three or four pounds big. So they're pretty, pretty good sized rainbow trout. Um, it's great fun uh, for fly fish, not just fly fishermen, but it's also a great family fishery. Um, you can come here and fish with bait, fish with fishing lures, you can troll. So, you know, the fish can be caught, you know, with um, a variety of fishing techniques. Today I'm fishing with my good friend Jessica from the Freshwater Fisher Society. So Jessica works as a learn to fish coordinator at the Fraser Valley Trout Hatchery. Um, you probably have seen her in the ice fishing episode we did earlier this year, um, but she's never done any interior lake fishing during the springtime. So hopefully we'll be getting her into some nice rainbow trout. So stay tuned and uh, hope you enjoy the show. So we've been fishing since 10 o'clock this morning and the condition hasn't been that great. Um, it's been pretty, I wouldn't say super windy, but it's been definitely breezy and we've got quite a bit of waves going on. So we've been bouncing up and down on the boat quite a bit. Um, it took a while for us to find the fish because um, it's been pretty cold as well. Um, temperatures below 10 degrees um, in the water. So the fish are not very active. There hasn't been a nice hatch going on. Um, but it's about 2, 2, two o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, finally, we found some fish. We're getting a lot of smaller fish. And uh, now, and this is the first decent size rainbow trout we've gotten today. Um, so this is what you come to Tangkwa Lake for. Um, a Panas rainbow trout, roughly around 2 pounds. And they can get up to 3 or 4 pounds. So we're going to let this guy go and catch some more fish. All right, here it goes. Let's get some more. <laughs> We went out this morning, um, I started fishing with bait, didn't get a single bite for like hours. Switch spots, still nothing. Um, Rod was fishing with a chronomid under his indicator on a fly rod. And so we switched up mine um, 
to a crowd of as well, but I was fishing just like a foot off the bottom. Nothing, still nothing. <laughs> so I uh, moved uh, a couple feet up off the bottom and now fishing is great. So yeah, I just had to try a bunch of different things to find out what was working. And it's looking like chronomids for us today. Okay, so this is my first time fishing in Interior Lake. Uh, Rod and I are fishing for the Panask strain of rainbow trout. Um, I'm finding these guys super feisty. Uh, they give a really great fight uh, when they're on the line jumping out of the water, which is super exciting. So there he is, we're gonna let him go. So the weather is a little more tolerable today. Definitely. <laughs> right. Yes. It's funny how, how fast it changes from snowy, windy to sunny and calm. And it's like warm. <coughs> I have half the amount of layers on today. Yeah, yeah. And that's something to keep in mind when people come up here. Um, I didn't realize it, but apparently we're, the elevation of this lake, it's around a thousand, over a thousand meters. So it's pretty high up. Yeah. Um, it, you don't feel it, but yeah. So the condition can really change. And even if you're coming up in the spring and summertime, you really got to be prepared. Um, bring lots of clothes. <laughs> lots of clothes. <laughs> lots of clothes, as we found out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so when, when you have a day like this, when, you know, the condition is fairly stable, um, the fish should be, theoretically, it should be more eager to bite. We'll find that out. Yeah, we're just starting. Yeah. So we've only fished for maybe 10 minutes, yeah. but what we're going to do now, we're going to follow our friends um, Barry and Mike, who are the fish cultures from the Freshwater Fisher Society. Um, they're doing a bit of work over here. What are they doing, Jess? So Tunkwa Lake is one of our brood capture lakes, and so we've set up some traps. So brood capture just means this is where the um, spawning uh, adults come from. We rear the eggs um, at our hatcheries, but this is where we kind of collect them from. So. Yeah, so Mike and Barry have been working up here for about two this weeks is now. Week, yeah. yeah, and they, they set up a few traps, like what Jessica was saying. Um, so we're going to go check out the traps and see if there's some fish and uh, hopefully sampling some of them and it would be good to see. Cool. Okay, it's May the 7th, 2015. We're here at Tunkpa Lake. We are checking our net trap. It's located here at, at the lake. Uh, my name is Barry and, and uh, my helper here works for us uh, in seasonal work is Mike. This is a standard, standard, standard net. It's uh, eight, eight feet by, by uh, six feet. So it's a deep box. It goes down eight feet into the water. And uh, we're going to open it up now and we're going to see what we've caught. we're targeting here for FFSBC, we're after some Panask 
three-year-old rainbows for broodstock. And we're also co collecting some of the other fish that we caught here for some data for our research people so we can take some weights and lengths on those. So all the fish that are caught in this trap are going to be put into this tote here that's got water with an oxygen line connected to it as a life support system for the fish and we'll take them back to where they're going to be frozen. So right now Mike's just pulling up the eight foot box from the bottom and getting the fish to, to a, into a smaller area so that we can, we can hopefully get at them and net them out. So the rainbows that we've uh, took on out of the trap net here, that are in the tote, we're going to boat them back over to our, uh, our holding facility at Jack's Creek. And uh, we're gonna do some weights and links on them there and uh, we'll put our green uh, females there that will we'll be spawning in the near future in a holding cell. The other fish after they have their weights and their links taken will be released back into the lake. That was pretty interesting, eh? It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think most people don't realize how much work, um, you know, running this operation involves. Yeah. I mean, we, we're putting, what, 8 million fish a year into 800 lakes, and there's a lot of spawning going on, and besides that, there's also research. Yeah. Um, lots of research going on behind the scenes to try to make the fisheries better, right? And uh, it, was, it was pretty neat to see. Yeah, um, there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, yeah. that's the first time I've ever seen an egg take station. Me too. And uh, yeah, for them it's really hard work. I mean, they, they've been up here for two weeks, two weeks and they have another week coming up next week um, to spawn the fish when they're ready. Um, yeah, neat. So we're ready for some fishing? I know, I'm ready to get back to it. Yeah. <laughs> So that was fun. That was awesome. Yeah, so we, we didn't catch that many big fish today. Again, um, we got lots of small ones, but that's not really surprising considering there, is, there are 30,000, they're putting 30, over 30,000 fish a year. Um, so there's at least 30,000 one year old right. fish in here. Um, but there are definitely bigger fish. As you can see, we, we caught a couple of bigger ones as well, right? Yeah. But there's just less of them. Um, you have to get to those uh, smaller well, ones. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but it was pretty fun. Um, with the uh, warmer weather, we saw a bigger hatch going on, uh, right? Yes, So lots. 
So how was your first interior lake was, spring fishing season? It was season? awesome. Uh, yeah. Beyond my expectations, ending the day with our double header was mm -hmm. pretty, pretty yeah, cool. That was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And uh, but like I said, there's so many fish, so many, even though they're small, um, it's a good introductory fishery for families, for kids to come out, to try it out. Um, but not just from the boat, um, you can also fish from shore as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't have a boat, you want to get out on the boat um, at the resort, you can rent one as well. You see lots of people renting boats, going out by themselves. Um, so what are some of the things, other things we should tell people that they should bring um, besides, I guess, the boat fishing and... Boat fishing. Like yeah. we mentioned, the weather here changed so quickly, yeah. uh, so many times. Yep. So definitely be prepared yep. for that. Bring lots of layers so that you can you mm -hmm. can take those off for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, as long as you have your fishing gear, like you said, you can fish. This lake is accessible from shore and from a boat. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's easy. Yeah, and besides Tangkwa Lake, there's also quite a few other lakes nearby that are stocked by the Freshwater Fisher Society as well. So there's Logan Lake, um, there's, there's Layton just next door to us. Um, so lots of different options. Um, if, if this lake is too rough, too windy, um, so those are some of the other alternatives you can try as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we should talk a little, about, little bit about the Goldfish BC social media yeah. that you've been handling. So I know you guys have the Facebook page. Yeah. So what else, what else is new? Yeah, we also have a Twitter page as well as an Instagram and we can be found just by searching Goldfish BC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. what are some of the stuff um, you've been posting on yeah, there? Yeah, so that's uh, a place also um, that you can find stocking reports, where we're doing learn to fish programs. And then we're also just trying to show what the whole society is about. So some things like an egg station that we filmed mm -hmm. today, yeah. all of that sort of behind the scenes things, we're also gonna be trying to get out there so yeah. that you guys know what's going on as a part of our society. That's right, so lots of lots of videos and pictures yeah. of these uh, behind the scene operation you'll find, you can find on the Instagram page and the Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, right? definitely. Yep. And you can also check out my website at fishingwithrod.com, right? And I uh, hope you guys like the videos. And if you have any questions about fishing at Tanqua Lake, uh, leave a comment and uh, we'll be answering them. So until next time, good luck fishing. <laughs>